All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, this is another installment of our um, getting to know our Inspire Challenge projects. Um, the Inspire Challenge is the CGI, CGIAR initiative through the Big Data platform to support innovative projects using big data tools to solve food security problems. So last year, the Big Data platform awarded more than 1 million US dollars to innovative projects. And today we're talking to one of the teams, uh, one of last year's winning teams. Uh, the project is called Gamifying Weather Forecasting, Let It Rain Campaign. So um, to introduce myself, I'm Hannah. I'm the communications deputy for the CGIR platform for big data and agriculture. And today we're talking with uh, Sophie Rotman, who is a project coordinator at the Midday Company. Um, the Midday Company along with the Alliance of Biodiversity International and SIAT are the leaders of this project. Sophie, would you like to introduce yourself and the Midday Company? Yes. Um, hi, Anna. Thanks for that introduction. My name is Sophie Rotman. Um, I'm project coordinator at um, Medii. It's, oh, it's, I'm so sorry. It's not Medii, <laughs> but it's not Medii. Um, and basically what we do at Media is we um, are an organization that looks at how we can use media to reach uh, people, especially uh, rural people, and how we can communicate development in a way that actually reaches a large sector of um, the population. So we're based here in Nairobi, um, but we um, operate in Kenya as well as Tanzania and Uganda. We're looking to scale out into Ethiopia, um, Zambia as well. So basically we're based in East Africa and we look at how you can use media to communicate with uh, people across the whole country. Awesome, wonderful. And, yeah. so, and do you want to give any detail on your role as project coordinator? Um, yeah, so media I have, we have a lot of different productions that we have. One of our key focuses has always been agriculture. So the company was founded um, 25, over 25 years ago and was originally looking at how you can use radio to reach rural far, um, families and how you can reach them to communicate really key information around agriculture that they could use to implement in their farms and in that way increase their yields, their incomes and improve their livelihoods. Um, so we've since moved more towards television um, just because that's the best way to reach uh, people also in rural areas. A lot of people say people in rural areas don't have TVs um, or don't have access to, v to TVs. That's simply not true. So we have um, on Shamba Shape Up, which is our farm makeover show, we have about 6 million viewers weekly in Kenya alone. So if you don't own a TV yourself, you still might be watching with other people, which we see is, is really common. Um, and basically Shamba Shape Up is one of our key programs and it's also a key um, part of the Let It Rain campaign. So essentially Shamba Shape Up, as I was saying, is a farm makeover on a smallholder farm. So we visit farmers across Kenya, also Tanzania and Uganda, and we ask them, uh, you know, um, Elizabeth, what problems do you have? And she'll say, oh, the rains have been really late or my maize hasn't been going well or my cows haven't been producing enough milk. So we'll then bring on an expert uh, from the agricultural field who will then um, promote or advise on a really simple method of how she can improve her yields and her income. So we've seen over the last uh, 10 years, so this is the 10th series of Shamba Shape Up and we've seen that one of the key problems that all farmers mention when we ask them what are your problems is something to do with variable weather. So they don't say climate change, they don't say variable weather, but they'll explain something along the lines of the rains came late or um, it rained and it wasn't enough rain or um, we had a drought and I lost all my crop or you know there's not enough water to feed my cow in the dry season so they don't produce enough milk. So we've noticed that that's a really key problem um, and as media we've been uh, heavily invested in looking at how can we support farmers not only increase their yields of income but do so in the times of changing climate mm -hmm. and that's essentially how we came um, to work together with SIAD and we um, yeah we, we approached and we bid into the CGIR's big data platform because we thought it would be also really valuable to see how can we use big data and information and digital services to reach these farmers um, and yeah. so one of the other key components of the project um, is iShamba. So iShamba is a sister company to Media. Um, something that we saw maybe four or five years into uh, Shamba Shape Up was that we would have a lot of farmers calling us uh, on our private lines. So especially our director, David Campbell, would get calls early on a Sunday morning from a farmer saying, hey, listen, my cow's sick. I need advice. And 
um, being, you know, television producers, we're not trained agronomists. So uh, that's why we, we work with CIAT and CGIR and SIP and a lot of the CGIR partners, in fact, um, because they're the experts. So we realized with increasing number of calls that we needed to have a call center because people were simply, um, you know, looking for information. They were watching something on the program on a Saturday um, and then they wanted to implement it, but they needed more advice. Where can I get the quality seeds? How can I, you know, install that roof catch, water catchment, etc. So that's how Ashamba came into being essentially. Um, so Ashamba is a call center that's uh, staffed with trained agronomists and livestock experts. Um, they share, they just sit right next to us at Media and um, what we do on Shamba Shape Up towards the end of the program is we say, if you would like more information, get in touch with us through iShamba and we promote the short, the short code. So, you know, send the word join to 21606. Um, and iShamba has a free service whereby you sign up as a farmer, uh, you tell us what your location is, you tell us what are the two key crops that you're interested in, um, and you tell us what are the two markets that you would like to receive information on. Um, and then once you've done that, the call center staff um, will locate you on the map. This allows them to send you weekly weather updates. So we've been working with the Kenya Meteorological Department so far um, to get their weather. So we send you weekly weather updates based on your location. We send you agri tips on two of your selected crops, which are seasonal. So out in March, we'll start sending you um, messaging around, you know, seed selection, improved seed, uh, planting, spacing of, you know, for example, beans or potatoes. And then right across the growing season, uh, we'll look at things like weeding, thinning, pest and disease control, all the way down to harvest, um, harvesting and um, post-harvest storage. So it's actually very similar to Shamba Shape Up, which is also seasonal. And for livestock, it's event-based. So if we know your cow is in calf, then iShamba will send you messages relevant to that. So once it's given calf, you know, two, three, four weeks, these are the things that you need to be looking out for if it's vaccinating, if it's deworming, etc. Um, so iShamba ha has been really key in supporting farmers. Uh, we have nearly 400,000 farmers that have signed up to the iShamba platform who receive these, this messaging um, free of charge on a weekly basis. There's a premium version, which um, basically includes a additional to that, um, you, you're joined into WhatsApp groups, which we found really, really effective. So um, it's a cost of about six or to, to eight dollars a year you receive additional um, information for two more crops. Um, but what's really key is you put into a WhatsApp group by location. So we know where you are. We put you in a group with 250 other people and you can essentially send in pictures um, of, you know, at the moment we're getting lots of pictures of the locust or of other pests and disease on, on crops. Um, and you can put a question to the call center saying, you know, Aishamba, help me, what is this? Um, what can I do about it? And it's, it's really interesting because it's also become a kind of a marketplace. So people are now saying, hey, I've just harvested two tons of t potatoes who would like to buy them and somebody else will respond. Um, so it's developed into its, its, its own being. And of course, it's overseen with the Aishamba staff. So we make sure that there's no false information. If people are doing this, you know, advising each other, to, we make sure that the information is correct. Um, but what's really, really key as well for us is that we want to support people have better weather information, which is why we partnered again with iShamba Media and um, SIAT, because um, we would like to not only send people uh, better and more accurate information, which we're currently getting through SIAT, who have partnered with CalRO, so Kenya's um, 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 sorry, Livestock and Agricultural Government Organization, they, they receive better weather information through AWARE, who essentially go down to a nine kilometer radius um, and can tell you for that nine kilometer radius what the weather is. Um, but going forward, we would also like to, you know, get from farmers, um, understand what their situation is. So in this project, uh, basically what we're saying, what we've said is, um, okay, let me just, let me just start from the beginning of what the project is about. Yeah, uh, I'd, and love, <laughs> yeah if you, I'd love for you to walk us through um, like, the, how the game might look from the farmer's perspective. So how they would um, send in their, the information, what information you're looking to collect from them, and yes. then the process moving forward all the way through improving the local forecasts for okay. the farmers. All right. Okay, so with Let It Rain, uh, the idea that we had was, okay, we want to mobilize a national discussion about the importance of knowing um, when it's going to rain. We, we really want people to understand, or people do understand, but we really want to support people access better weather information, but also take it into consideration when they're planning. 
because when you ask the average Kenyan farmer, when did it used to rain, even though in the last 10, 20 years when you were growing up, the answer is 15th of March. 15th of March, the rains came and, it, and they did and it was very consistent. Um, but that's changed tremendously. So now, you know, we've had rains from October through to December in January, then it stopped again. And now we've had rains again. So it's really, really variable. And this really tampers with, um, with, with people's way of, of growing food because they can't rely on the rains anymore. So what we're saying is, okay, um, we all need to recognize the importance of knowing when it's going to rain and we need to access better weather information. So how the game works is um, you can sign up on your phone. Um, we promote the game on, we promoted it on Shamba Shape Up. So it goes out, it's gone out to 6 million people. We have a little promos. Um, we do a little skit with our presenters and then we show the promotion of how the game works. And how it works is you go on your phone, it can be a smartphone or it can be a simple phone. Um, for the smartphone, you can go and follow a link. That's www.rain.win or you type in a short code, which most players are using the short code because most people are, are still using their feature phones. And then you are presented with a set of questions that you go through. So we want to know where you are. That's important for the weather. We want to know what are the crops that you're growing and you walk through a set of questions. So we basically um, say to in the promotion and um, the proposition is tell us when you think the rains are going to start in your location. So that's the game. You're guessing when the rains are going to start where you are and you can win up to 100,000 shillings. So that's the equivalent of um, $1,000 for your county. So we've selected 10 county, 10 counties, sorry. Um, and these are counties that are, they're distributed across the country. So we're in different regions, different agroecological zones. We've started with 10 as a pilot um, this year, but we would like to actually go to the whole country going forward. And so in those 10 counties, you can then guess for your location. So you go to the um, USSD or to the app, you tell us where you are, your name, etc., uh, And now you just say, what's your guess? So, you know, um, 12th of April. So you type that in and then it says, congratulations, you've guessed, we recorded your guess, etc. cetera. Um, and then what we thought would be really interesting for us is to collect more data, not only about, you know, where you are and what you're growing, but what are the issues that you've had with climate? Right. Um, you know, have you received um, in the last years, did you, was the rain on time or did you experience drought or did you experience any other forms of weather strains? And then we also ask things like, you know, um, have you got insurance? Because that's also really key going forward. So basically what happens is after a week, I think, um, you got a new message on your phone saying, hey, this is let it rain. Uh, would you like to get a second guess? Um, yes, of course, I want a second guess. And we say, you know, um, tell us a bit more about your farm to receive a second guess. So that's when we ask these climate related questions and you go down. Um, and then your, your vote or your guess is basically recorded. Um, so yeah, we, that's how the game worked. We promoted it on Shamba Shape Up on various other social media channels, Facebook, etc., on the iShamba WhatsApp groups. And um, we've had 20, I think just, uh, just around 20,000 people play the game. Great. Yeah, so that's really good. Um, we experienced a couple of challenges here and there, which I think also made the number um, kept the number lower than we had hoped, but um, I think 20,000 is a really good start for, for this pilot and it also gives us enough data to see, okay, you know, when are people guessing? Why are people not guessing? We saw we have a really, um, you know, really good comprehensive statistics of when people played, times of the day, when did they stop playing, when did, you know, even in the, um, you know, as they were answering questions, where did they stop answering questions? And I think one of the key um, reasons why people stopped playing the game was because their counties weren't represented. Mm -hmm. So we actually had a lot of people calling in and asking, you know, where's my county or why, why isn't my county there? So uh, it's a bit of a shame because we weren't trying to exclude people, but it, there was okay. just a limit of how many people we could, how many counties we could have in there. Yeah, um, that's, that that's, is, like, that's quite a positive result to see that there are people in counties who are like, would actively like to be participating. Yeah, there were, there were, and there's really interesting statistics on that. We would have had a far higher response if we, if we had, we had included all the counties, certainly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's, that's basically how the game works. So we're now currently, um, SIAD are um, mapping out um, where the rains have begun. So what happens is um, you're guessing for your, your actual ward. So it's down to the nine kilometer radius, uh, but we've just divided it into counties to make it more clear. 
So once all of the wards in that county have received rains, we basically block off that county. So you can't guess anymore if you have received rains. Um, we should be very close to all counties having received rains. I think in the next week or two, we'll be there. Uh, and then, um, and that's when we will start basically um, calculating who won. So that's, SIAD is basically doing that. So they will be looking at where did it rain? Where, what did you guess? Um, they've got a really complicated ag algorithm that does that. Yeah. And then they'll essentially let us know um, and we'll start dispersing, um, you know, the prize money to the different winners. And we'll also uh, announce it on Shamba Shape Up and all, on all the media channels. We won't be naming people, but we will announce, you know, it's been closed. The game has, real, has um, officially um, closed and the, these are the number of winners per county. Um, and, you know, if you want to, we have actually, um, when we closed the game, so when people could no longer guess, which was four weeks after we started promoting it, um, the last message that everybody got was, if you would like to stay in touch with us about the next game, um, you know, say yes. So we know that when we go into the next, um, you know, the next time we do this, which we absolutely want to do, we'll have already a whole database of people who said right. they're really keen on playing the game again next yeah. time around yeah yeah i'm sure all of those farmers are just on the edge of their seats waiting to hear oh, I'm yeah. sure they are. Yeah. <laughs> um will you talk a little bit about um the gamification process the uh the local gaming co studio company that you worked with to design the game and what factors you consider to get the highest levels of engagement yeah so uh, we partnered with Usiku Games, who are a Kenyan um, gaming for good company. So they develop a lot of games, um, but instead of just, you know, gambling or whatever, they're trying to get people to actually um, do quizzes that are educative, uh, play games that will enrich their general knowledge, etc. cetera. So uh, that's, that's the main reason why we went, we selected them. We'd, we, we'd heard about a lot of other gaming companies that we knew, but they seem to be on the same, have the same vision as us. So again, using game as, as, as a way to support social development, which is what we do with media. So that's, that's basically how we got to know them and why we thought they would be a really good partner to go with. Um, the way that we've set up the game or they've set up the game is really trying to get people interested in the guessing component as a way to draw them in. Um, of course, it's not, it, it's not the most um, elaborative game in the sense of games, obviously we're also limited to people playing on feature phones, which um, you know limits kind of how much of the gaming part you can have in it. But um, the guessing of the reins was was a key thing that drew people in, and then making sure that when we had these interviews, so these short questions about you know your crop, um, you know did you receive drought, um, how many you know how many people are you farming with, all of these questions, we tried to keep them quite brief, keep you interested and then let you guess the, the onset of the rains so that, um, you know, that you were still interested in, and sending updates about that as well, sending links to videos and, you know, just trying to make it as fun um, and entertaining as possible to drive people in. And yeah. I think it really helped having it on Shamba Shape Up because people um, trust Shamba Shape Up. It's been there for 10 years. For a lot of viewers, it's their most trusted source of agricultural information. Um, we know that from the surveys that we do. Um, and then also through Aishamba, which is another very trusted source. So people know that this is, these are, you know, two entities that will engage you that are trying to be fun and interesting, but you're there for the learning um, as much as you are there for the entertainment and the fun. So I think people playing the game knew that that was what the game would be, that it wouldn't just be a pure, you know, random game of guessing, but that there was really that educational component to it and that going forward, um, it would be a way to actually support you in the way that you farm. Yeah, yeah. great. Okay, so now we're at the stage of the project where um, most of the, the, the guessing portion is wrapping up as most of the counties um, should be experiencing the first rains soon. Yeah. And then SIAT has this wealth of information that they are going to leverage some big data um, approaches to optimize weather forecasting going forward and also mm -hmm. optimizing the um, plant, like suggested planting and harvesting dates. Mm -hmm. um, so would you tell us a bit about the um, machine learning that will be used to um, look at the, the crowdsource data? Yeah. 
So um, Seattle, the original idea with Seattle had always been to use this um, game as a way of also um, getting information, crowdsourcing information about the onset of the rains. And what's also really interesting is to understand what do people think about when the rains are going to start compared to what is the reality of when the rains start. Um, so that's one really key compo component. So really pulling in when do people think it's going to start and then matching that with when do the rains begin going forward. Um, and at the same time, what another really key component from media's perspective and also for CN is not only the onset of the rains alone, but being able to um, recommend to people going forward when to plant to relative to the rains. Because some crops, uh, for example, potatoes, you'll have to plant, uh, you can plant up to a week before, maybe others you have to plant two days before the rains. Some you can still plant a couple of days after it's actually rained. So, um, to foresee that that's that's one of the key things that they're gonna start working on now is really um computing you know what the rains were um what when do people think the rains were and then what crops are they farming so that we can come back to them with much more accurate information going forward as weather forecasting gets better also so um one of the key partners is aware as i mentioned right um for siad they are sourcing weather information from them um, it's in, within a nine kilometer radius of, of, of where you're located. And this is an opportunity for SIA to feed back to them as well about the quality of the weather data. Um, so I think trying possibly also um, getting from farmers a confirmation of when it actually started raining as a kind of weather station, <laughs> if, you, if you understand. So I mean, we have a lot of weather stations all across the country. Um, but crowdsourcing in future, when actually the rains began, and um, and on a very you know very uh, geotagged um, manner in a way, can significantly significantly improve weather forecasting going forward. So that's not something we we've built into this pilot because um, it's a little bit more technical and requires people to have smartphones and to really understand the definition of when it will rain. But also gauging through this through this um, game and the statistics around it, how many people or who is really engaged in the communication and who could be a potential key um, informant going future for this kind of activity is really valuable. Because if you have, uh, you know, 20,000 people playing in 10 counties, um, that's a lot of data points that you can collect just from, from, from people. And it can be very, very accurate. It can be geotagged. You could even, um, you know, introduce there's, there's the smartphones that have embedded it into them, a kind of uh, rain gauge, so it's moisture meter, etc. And um, I think going forward, it's a, it could be a significant contribution into improving uh, weather prediction and weather forecasting on a really local level. Yeah. Yeah. And then looking forward, we also have some notes that the project has considered um, integrating climate adaptation. Um, rainwater conservation and conservation agriculture, possible like um, techniques, communications with farmers. Yes. Uh, is that something that you would be considering for an additional round of the campaign? Yes, cer certainly. For media, that's one of our absolute prime uh, goals at the moment is to include much more um, content around climate adaptation. So we've, we've been doing that for the last 10 years. In fact, one of the largest impacts for, for media is program, Shamba Shape Up, has been around climate ad adaptation related to making silage and hay. Um, so basically recommending and showing farmers how you can grow the silage and hay so that you can still feed your cows in the dry season so they can cont continue producing milk when it's dry, when the prices for milk go up in the market. Um, but we want to look at it for all crops, for all livestock at all angles. So um, in Shamba Shape Up, we would actually like to run a strand across the 26 episodes in which in every single episode, you have something around climate adaptation. So, you know, and, and it's relevant throughout the whole growing season. So whether it's, you know, land preparation, whether you're growing your crop and, you know, you had a, a, a storm or a drought, um, all of those things. We, we also really, really keen on insurance. So working with key smallholder insurance partners who are willing to insure smallholder farmers who don't have much collateral essentially, but really, really, really could benefit from an insurance that covers them when their, you know, their whole maize or their whole beans or whatever production is ruined because of late rains or because of a drought or hail or whatever it may be. So for us, um, we think climate adaptation, conservation agriculture is a key topic that we've had going on for the last five seasons. We've, we, we're actually currently broadcasting 
um, and have that in there as a key, key, key topic. So any kind of climate smart adaptation practice that is relevant to a smallholder farmer, um, we would very much like to include in the next, in the next phase and see how we can include it into, into the game as well. Um, and uh, across Shamba Shape Up in Kenya and in other countries as we go and we, and we, we start um, taking the program into other countries as well. Yeah, I think the, the connection to um, pretty immediate livelihoods of farmers is, is so clear given how, um, like how necessary that, that information is of when the rains first come because some crops are just so sensitive, time sensitive for that. It's really yeah. like the impact will be um, long term and short term, but the short term like that's, that's so important on a, just a seasonal income basis for many farmers, I would imagine. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Great, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And we uh, can't wait to hear the updates as the farmers are, are notified in the coming weeks about how, um, how correct their guesses were. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. The, the promotional videos were, were awesome. Um, and we wish you guys all the best moving forward with the project and can't wait to hear more. Thank you so much. All the best to you as well and take care. Yep, you as well. Bye, Sophie. Right. Thanks for joining. Bye, Hannah. Thank you.